How are you guys doing tonight? Let's just posture our hearts to the Lord. Jesus, precious Savior, the love of our life, we are here to worship you tonight. We are here for you. We are so thankful for you, Jesus. We are so thankful for what you're doing right now. Lord, we ask that you would come and have your way. We ask that you would fill this room, fill every home with your presence, Lord. We come to look at you tonight and simply gaze upon you, Jesus. Your eyes of fire, your hands and your feet with holes in them, Lord. What a precious sacrifice you are. Thank you for taking our place, Lord, so that we could come and be with you. So we come tonight, Lord, with our, with our hearts just poured open before you, Jesus. Oh, how we love you. How we love you. Just start telling him how much you love him. He's so worthy of it. Jesus, we love you. Don't wait for me to say it for you. You have to say it yourself. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let thankfulness never leave our hearts, Lord. Even tonight as we're worshiping you, our hearts are postured with such thankfulness for what you did that we couldn't even come without your blood. Let us see you rightly tonight, Lord. And let all of our hearts be in unity with what you want to do, Lord. And we say yes. We say yes tonight, Lord, as the body of Christ. We say yes that you can come. We say yes to have your way. We yield ourselves. We lay our hearts on the altar tonight, Lord. And we come to simply just look at you and to love you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
that's my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the interest sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone oh
Let's all stand and sing. You are my Unless you're on your knees or on your face. prayer church pure and holy tried and true tried and true and with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary Jesus Make it your prayer. Sing it straight to Jesus. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, try. Try it. 
Holy Spirit's moving. I sense His presence now. Sing it, church. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Sing in the spirit here for a minute. Come on, lift your voice. Sting the elf and the arm and the elf and then the aura. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Fill your people, Holy Spirit. Fill your people. Oh, sing in the Holy Ghost. Sing in the Holy Ghost. Sing for another minute. Come on, lift your voice. You in your homes watching tonight, lift your voice to the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. That's the sound. It's the sound of heaven. Sing, sing, sing. Make us sanctuaries, carriers, trusted carriers of the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not our own doing, Lord. It's the work of your blood. It's the work, it's the accomplishment of the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus cleanses the soul. The blood of Jesus turns slaves into children. It's the blood of Jesus that is a magnet for the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. It's the blood.
Come on, church, sing this. What can make me Sing it, sing it.
Just begin singing in the Spirit. Come on. We're going to follow the wind of the Holy Ghost in them. Oh, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus tonight. Come on, agree with me. I plead the blood of Jesus tonight. I plead the blood over every lost soul tonight. I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone who's suffering with sickness right now. I plead the blood over this building. I plead the blood over your mind. I plead the blood over your families. I plead the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood that speaks a better word. I plead the blood tonight. Oh, Jesus, with the hiss up tonight of faith as they anointed the two doorposts and the lentil on that Passover night, I plead the blood tonight over you. Over you, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood. The cost of life, it paid my way. Death, it's price. And when it flowed down from the cross, my sins were gone, my sins forgot. There is a grave. Try to hide in this precious blood that gave me life. And in the three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense.
take the next minute and sing in the spirit. God's going to begin moving. He's already here moving. Come on, sing in the spirit. I want the front row and these two sections to begin praying. Praying in the spirit for a harvest of souls. Right now. I want the church to sing in the spirit. I want the first the sections right here, front row, praying in tongues. Believe God for a harvest of souls right now. I feel the mighty hand of God. There is power, power, wonder-working power and the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Keep, keep blessing the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy. Ryan. Heavenly Father, thank you for the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And wonderful Holy Spirit, thank you for being here tonight. We give you all of our attention. I want you to say that out loud. Holy Spirit, tonight I give you all of my attention. Say that again. Holy Spirit, tonight I give you all of my attention. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you in the presence of God. I don't want anyone moving. I feel the authority of heaven here. I want you to grab a seat quickly and listen to me. This is not the time to move, so grab a seat, grab it quickly. Father, thank you for your heart for people. As I'm talking, just sit there and listen to me. You can close your eyes if you'd like to. Whatever you do, give the Lord your full attention. Holy Spirit, begin to blow like a mighty wind. Fill it with a, with a string, a nice pad. Begin to blow like a mighty wind. Begin to fall upon people in your love, your loving conviction. Grab the hearts of men and women and children in this room right now. Let your authority manifest. You came to destroy the works of the devil, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Christ is risen. That's right. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. You just sit there in the presence of the Lord, giving the Holy Spirit all of your attention right now. Nobody else matters. Do you know how much Jesus loves you? We'll never really know. We'll spend heaven pondering the love of God. I want to read this to you, John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who's come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, you know, as I'm speaking, I feel the Lord moving. I want you to give all of your attention, listen carefully, to the sense of the Spirit upon you right now. We must become friends of the Spirit, aware of the Spirit, dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Friends, listen to me. Jesus was incarnate of the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Jesus preached by the Spirit. Jesus healed by the Spirit. 
Jesus offered his life, the Bible says, through the eternal spirit. Jesus was raised from the dead by the spirit. Jesus ascended on high on the cloud of the spirit and in like manner he'll return again with the spirit. And the same Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus at the River Jordan is here tonight. The same Holy Spirit that filled the temple with glory and the priests could not minister when Solomon dedicated the temple is here tonight. The same Spirit that hovered over the tabernacle and led Israel for 40 years through the wilderness of life is here tonight. Give him your full attention. He may come upon some of you like fire. He may come upon some of you like a gentle breeze. He may give peace to those who are anxious and tormented. He may set some of you free from demonic power. And many of you tonight will be led to the precious bloody feet of Jesus Christ crucified who will set you free. That's why you came tonight. You came for this moment. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind, the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel? In other words, are you a great teacher and you don't know the Holy Spirit? Do you not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know, we, speaking of Trinity, and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Speaking of the work of the cross, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The heart of God is to save you to the uttermost tonight. It is not the heart of Jesus to condemn you. It is the heart of Jesus to save you. Listen carefully. You cannot save yourself. You cannot attend enough services to earn your salvation. You cannot read enough devotionals to earn your salvation. The wind must blow. The Holy Spirit must do the work. And tonight, possibly, as much as any other night that we've gathered, I sense the wind of heaven, the Holy Spirit, blowing. Why? With what objective? What is his heart? 
to lead you to Jesus. I want you to notice that Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night. Friends, look at me in the eye. We all come to Jesus at night. All of us, when we came to Jesus, were living in the night. For the light of day was not shining upon us. We were slaves of darkness, the blind leading the blind. And the Bible says our father was the devil himself, the prince of darkness. All of us come to Jesus in the night. Jesus did not reject Nicodemus because he came to him in the night. He actually preached the gospel to Nicodemus in the night. And unless Jesus is Lord of your life, friend, listen to me, you are living in the night. You are living in darkness. You do not have to be a slave of sin. How many times have I told you, your attendance is not proof of your salvation, your attendance here. It's his residence in you that is proof of salvation. The Holy Spirit is here tonight. I walked into this, I walked into this building tonight and I said, Lord, help me be so aware of you and only you tonight. Help me know your slightest movement. I want to know what you want to do. Moment by moment, make me a friend of the Holy Spirit. And when we begin singing about the blood of Jesus, I begin to feel the Holy Spirit's burden, his deep desire to bring you to Jesus and him crucified. It's not the Lord's heart to condemn you. It is his heart to save you. Now listen very carefully. Before you were ever born, the Lord knew you would be here tonight. Before you were ever born, before your parents were born, the pain you've been walking through, well, the Lord did not cause it. He knew you'd be facing it tonight. The bondage that you're living in, as I said, you do not have to live in, but he knew it would be holding you tonight. Jesus does not need to try and save you tonight. He is salvation. His very name is the Lord who saves. It's what he does. Where does Jesus turn Nicodemus' attention in the night? To the wind. To the presence of God. And if you were to sit there right now and take an inventory of your soul and realize how short this life is, realize that one day you will close your eyes, one day you will breathe your last. Eternity is promised to no one. Tomorrow, I should say, is promised to no one. Everyone here will breathe their last. And the Bible says a man is appointed to die and then face the judgment. Tonight we were singing about the blood of Jesus. When you stand before the throne of judgment, you do not want to stand there in your own merit. You do not want to stand there with a list of your achievements. You want to stand there marked by the blood of Jesus. If the Lord says, why should I give you access to my eternal kingdom? Your answer should be, because Jesus died in my place. Because Jesus lives in my heart. Because Jesus died and rose again. It is all about Jesus. Many of you grow up in, have grown up in church. But you know and I know, when the lights are off and your bedroom door is locked and you're all alone, you're no more free than the person who's never been to church. Jesus didn't die for that. Jesus didn't die so people would simply go to church. Jesus died to give you life. To give you true life. I can stand here right now under the fear of the Lord and tell you in boldness that I am not a slave to sin. I can tell you that Jesus truly set me free from my bondages, 
from my weakness, from my habits. The Bible teaches us to number our days. I want you for a moment to do that right now. Number your days. Answer a few questions. How long is eternity? How long does eternity last? How glorious is heaven and how hideous is hell? Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven. And it's not his his desire that you go to hell, unfortunately. So many are going to hell. The Bible teaches that hell has enlarged herself. The Bible tells us that hell was not created for us. It was created for the devil and his angels. The mercy of God, listen to me, close your eyes. The mercy of God is being extended to you right now. The mercy of God. You can be free in a moment. You can be redeemed in a moment. You can receive eternal life in a moment. You can leave here tonight with eternal confidence and the Holy Spirit will bear witness with you forever that you are a child of God. You don't have to wonder anymore. You can leave free. You can leave gazing upon sin as the disgusting deceiver that it is. The only slave you will be is a love slave to Jesus. All that can happen tonight in a moment. But I want you to hear me and hear me well, friend. This life will come to an end. This world is coming to an end. This world is not really real, not in comparison to the Lord. The Lord is eternal. This world is not. The world system is passing away. What does the world have for you? What is so beautiful about this world? It's becoming more ugly by the day. What is there to trust in? Who is there to trust? Who can you trust today? You don't know who to believe. You don't know whose advice to take. Friends, listen to me. There is one who is more sure than any boulder, than any ocean, than any mountaintop. His name is the rock of ages. He is immovable. He is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This Jesus came and poured his blood out and took your death because you were deserving of death. I was deserving of death. Why? Because of sin. Jesus took our sin, became our sin. He died on the cross, shed his perfect blood. He was buried and raised again to give you newness of life and to declare that he is the Son of God, God Almighty himself. And this Jesus is coming back again. I said, this Jesus is coming back again. Prophecy is being fulfilled daily at this point. Daily. Just, I'm not telling you to get addicted to the news, but there is some news that does actually share something somewhat accurate. Prophecy right now is being fulfilled daily. Jesus is coming back. And when he returns, listen carefully, when he returns, you will face him as his bride or his enemy. The choice is yours. That's the reality. And I'm not preaching like this because I'm mad. I'm not mad. I love you. My heart is breaking open for you in the love of God. I feel the love of the Holy Spirit. You say, are you begging me to come to Jesus tonight? Absolutely. Unapologetic, unapologetically, I am preaching myself hoarse tonight so that you would come to Jesus. I am begging you, come to Jesus. There is no one like him. There is no one who gives peace to the soul. No, who else heals the sick? Who else sets people free? Who else can give you a brand new life in a millisecond? I'm begging you tonight to come to Jesus. Children, listen to me. Listen to me, children. God brought you tonight. Your parents were just used of God. If you feel the Lord calling you to himself tonight, you feel tonight that you want to give your life to Jesus, 
I want you to look in just a moment. You're going to look at your mom and dad and say, Mom, Dad, take me down there. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Many of you, listen carefully, many of you came here because you heard about Jesus' image. Jesus' image can't save you. Maybe he used that as a hook to draw you with cords of love to himself tonight. You need to leave here with Jesus, not with Jesus' image. You need to leave here with the true Jesus image branded on your heart tonight. Leave here completely free. With every head bowed and eye closed, I want you right now to do business with your soul. I don't want you to think about it too much. You either know that you know that you know, and once you know in your heart, this is for me tonight, I want you to lift your hand. If you want to give all and everything to Jesus, maybe you followed him for a while, for a long time, and the fire's gone out. I want you to lift your hand right now. You say, Michael, I want to give all. God bless you. You say, I want to give all to Jesus tonight. Maybe it's the first time. Maybe you have to do it all over again. I want everyone to stand right now. I want everyone to stand. Listen carefully. If you raised your hand, please hear me, or you wish you did, I want you to get out of your seat and get down here. Children, that goes for you too. If you brought someone tonight, if you brought someone tonight, and you know they need Jesus, or you're sitting next to somebody who you think needs Jesus, I want you to look them in the eye and bring them down here. Say, come on, let's go. Come up front, come up front, come up front. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. They're coming from everywhere. Thank you, Father. Come on, give your life to Jesus. Come as close as you can. Come as close as you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, they're still coming. Come on, you're there in your seat. Listen, listen. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. You who are sitting next to someone that you think may need Jesus, you know that person. Do the work of an evangelist right now. You know that person. Look them in the eyes and say, come on, let's go. Let's give our life to Jesus tonight. Look at these precious children. Come on, guys, give the Lord praise. Oh, Jesus, thanks. Oh, Jesus, thanks. Oh, Jesus, thanks. This is what happens when the Holy Spirit moves. He's just looking for friends. Oh, look, the young kids are still coming. Come up close. Come up close. L little man, you come right here, little man. Come on. Come on. Guys, children are being born again. Come on. This is wonderful. Hallelujah. They're still coming. Come, sweetie. Come on. Come give your life to the Lord. Come give your life to the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the devil's losing big tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You are the conquering king. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In just a second here, yeah, God bless you guys. Come on. Come on. See, the Holy Ghost, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is not a dry erase board or a PowerPoint or a manual. Never does the scripture describe him as such, but it does describe him as a wind and as wine and as oil and as a river and in the likeness of a dove and like a fire shut up in my bones. Listen to me. When the Holy Ghost starts moving like this, he starts landing on people and drawing them with conviction and five get saved here and two get saved over there. It's the work of the Spirit. You see, he's like a river. He's the greatest evangelist. You can learn your three-point evangelism sermon. That doesn't do it. It's the Holy Ghost. Come give your life to the Lord. Come give your life to the Lord. It's not our sermons that save. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit who draws people to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See these young people weeping. Wow, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What an honor to see this. Thank you, Lord. Everyone who's come forward, would you just look at me for a moment? Tonight, you're going to take your heart 
and offer your heart, the depths of your life to the Lord. You are going to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. The Bible teaches us that. But what you're really doing is offering the depths of your being to the Lord the best you can. It's not about getting every word perfect. Though what we say is important, but that doesn't bring salvation. It's the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who is the seal of our salvation. So tonight you're going to offer your life to a real person. His name is Jesus Christ. That real person has made a promise that if you come to him, he will not cast you away. So if you come to him tonight in authenticity, which I believe all of you have, he won't cast you away. He will bring you to himself, the scripture teaches. And he will put his spirit inside of you. Listen very carefully and never remind you of your sin again. Oh, wow. And he will throw your sin into a sea called forgetfulness and remove you and your sin as far as east is from the west. Never again will Jesus say, do you remember what you did on January the 8th, 2021? That's gone. That's gone. And your real birthday is happening right now. Your real birthday. I say this every week, but it's majestic and beautiful, the truth of it. He's not going to change your life tonight. He's going to replace your life tonight. Give you a brand new life tonight. You're going to be born again, not just changed. Old things will completely pass away, and all things will become new. All things. You have a brand new life. Are you ready to give your life to this Jesus? All right. I want everyone out there to stretch their hands toward these precious people. I want our team here up front just to surround them. And while we're praying, this is going to be the posture of your heart out there, church. You're going to pray that they will not know another day away from the Lord's presence and that they will live a life of fire, a life of purity unto the Lord. Amen. Let's all pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, come on loud. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. Save my soul. I repent of my sin. I turn from it. I turn from the world. I turn from the devil. I turn from my own ways, my own will. I am no longer the Lord of my life. You are the Lord of my life. I turn to you, Lord Jesus. I place my complete trust in you. Jesus, I believe that you came to the earth, that you suffered and died, that you lived a perfect life, and you shed your blood on the cross, and that you died for me and for those in sin around the world. Jesus, I believe that you were buried and raised again three days later. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of the living God. And I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father. And that you are coming back again to rule and reign eternally as King of kings and Lord of lords. Here we go now. Say, dearest Jesus, come into my heart. Save my soul. Receive me as I receive you. I am yours forever. I am born again. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 
For those of you who came forward, would you just look at me one more time? You don't have to live another day that's inconsistent and up and down with God. The only cycle that is promised by the scriptures in Christ is glory to glory. You just don't have to live like that. You can live in the delight of his presence 24-7 if you want to. You can have as much of Jesus as you'd like to. (laughs) That messes me up every time I say it to myself. To do that, there's a few things you need to do. Number one, read your Bible every day. How often are you going to read your Bible? Okay, this is the most important meal you have of the day. I want to I want to encourage you to start your day in the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, we'll help you get one, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Number two, pray every day. What is prayer? It is childlike conversation with God. That's it. You say, I don't know how. Prayer teaches prayer. Jesus made it so simple. He said, go into the room, close your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who dwells in secret will reward you openly. So if you have a door, you qualify. If you don't, grab a, grab a curtain. If you don't have a curtain, go in the woods. But just get alone with God. And if you don't know where to start, just start by saying, I don't know what I'm doing. And the Holy Spirit will reply this way, perfect. That's what I like to work with. Now let me teach you. All right, pray every day. And, 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 and I want to encourage you to pray with your Bible open. Because while you're reading, you'll have questions. And when you, you begin to talk to God about those questions, prayer is birthed. You don't know it's being birthed. But the moment you talk to the Lord about what you're reading, you begin praying the will of God. This is the will of God. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Number three, get baptized in water. I've seen a lot of baptismal services. I am biased, but I think we are the best at baptism. Especially when Ben Fitz is around. He and I are a, are a great team. We hold you under just long enough to get all the junk off you. And you can still breathe when we're done. Baptism is important. It is not a recommendation. It is a commandment. Baptism cuts you off from this perverse age. You come out of the waters beaming in newness of life. And baptism has always been meant to be an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Never in the Bible is baptism separate from the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you go into the waters, the old man dies in the waters, stays in the watery grave. You burst forth in an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right. Very important. Number four, you need to join a local church. I would love for you to come here. I don't have some secret system to try to get you here. There is absolutely nothing up my sleeve. There's no pamphlet you're going to get that's meant to get you here. Now, you will get something that's meant to help you walk with Jesus. We would love to have you here. It'd be an honor. But I'm telling you this in truth. Just find a church. If it's not this one, find any church. But it must meet a few criteria. Number one, find a church that loves the presence of God. Because the presence of God is God. You don't want to go to a church that doesn't love God. That makes sense. Find a church that loves the Bible and believes the whole thing. Even the stuff that we don't always understand. Find a church that loves everything, as Bill Johnson says, even the maps. All right? The Word of God and the presence of God. And do not settle with attending a church. Give your heart to a people. Go deep in the soil and covenant your heart to a people in the presence of God. The church is a people who are filled with His presence and live in His presence. That's church. Okay. Last but not least, they're all wonderful, but for some reason this is my favorite in a meeting like this. Ask Jesus for the same power that He walked in when He walked the earth. We call that the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus made a promise. You will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be witnesses. 
You'll go way beyond witnessing. That's important. But your life will actually become the message. Your life will become the witness. You will become the message, a living epistle that Christ is alive. You do not have to earn that precious baptism of the Holy Spirit, that gift of the Father. That is accomplished by the Lord Himself. You simply need to receive. I'm going to pray over you tonight. Our team is going to gather around them. Why don't we do that, guys? Michelle, the whole crew, yeah, all y'all, just get around them, both sides. We're going to pray for you. And I'm going to be in faith that the Lord will do it. Will He do it right now? I don't know. For me, it, yeah, it took a little while, a few weeks. Maybe the Lord will visit you tonight. Maybe He'll visit you in a dream. Maybe He'll visit you in the morning when you pray. Maybe it'll be, I don't know. But I'm going to set my faith right now and believe the Lord Jesus to stretch out His hand and clothe you in fire. Aaron, you come out too, buddy. Come on, get over here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nico, you come. Gina, come out. Come out. I need a few more hands. Church, let's stretch our hands now in faith. Heavenly Father, you promised. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at the kids. Heavenly Father, you promised a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you pray, you're praying right now as the high priest that your children would receive all that's been given. So right now in Jesus' name, I just want all of you just to receive, re receive right here. You don't have to beg. You don't even have to pray. I don't even want you praying. I just want you to receive. Heavenly Father, you told us to ask of you. Touch your people now with the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and His power to be a witness. Pick up those keys. Give me a nice full pad. I want you to fill the whole room with it. Fill the whole room with it. Yeah, yeah, right. More, more, more. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Receive, receive, receive the gift and power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you may feel like God is giving you your prayer language. R surrender. Some of you may feel fire, like, like a fire come upon you. That's the power of God. Some of you may feel overwhelming joy. Church, I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for them. This is the work of the ministry. Children, just sit there and close your eyes. Give the Lord your attention. And you ask the Lord Himself. Say, Lord, give me the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive fire from heaven. I praise you, Jesus. Re receive the power to be a witness, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Yep, the Lord's moving. He's touching them. He's touching them. Thank you, Father. It was on a night like tonight where I heard a message like this. And the fire of God fell on me in 1989. I was filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke in new tongues. Jessica was filled with the Spirit about four feet away from me. The same night, I was 12, she was eight. It feels very, very similar on this platform. In the name of Jesus, receive children, receive, 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 receive. Give me this little guy here. Receive the power of the Holy Keep him right there. Keep him right there. Receive, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Come upon him in glory. Touch these young people. Jesus, Jesus, touch them, touch them, touch them. Touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them. Touch them. Thank you, Father. Oh, this is wonderful. He's moving right now. I feel it. I'm telling you, I just felt like three seconds ago. I feel God. I feel God moving. Receive joy unspeakable and full of glory.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive, receive, receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring me that young man. Come here, young man. Come on. See, you can't rush the Lord. Can't rush the Lord. Just bring him right over here. Where are you from? Tampa. Why are you here? You gave your heart to Jesus tonight? Yeah. What did he save you from? From everything. You want the presence of God tonight? Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. Lord, burn in him like a fire. Use his life to bring many to the cross. Come, wonderful Holy Spirit, and fill him with the fire of God. Undeniable presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for snatching him out of darkness and conveying him into the kingdom of your light. Now use him for your glory. Use him for your glory. You touch him with your hand, precious Lord. Fill him. Fill him. Fill him. Use these young people. Why were y'all clapping? Are you with him? Where are y'all from? Why'd you come tonight? You brought him. Good decision. The Lord's all over him. You guys can sit. Sit down. Let's go with the, let's go with the flow here. Don't get distracted. Distraction will kill it. Distraction will kill it. Distraction is an enemy. You can go back to your seats, children. Everyone go back to your seats very quickly. Can we give the Lord praise? <laughs> Guys, let's help them. Let's help them. Let's help them. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, go back to your seats. The Lord will stay with you. As a family, we're going to have to live to live in the presence of God. Learn, I should say, how to, how to live in the presence of God. John and Dom, you guys can go sit down. You guys can go. Go. You need to rest. Joel, you stay with me, huh? a smart thing to bring people who need God to God. Bring them into His presence. That's where everything changes. We forgot to do our new believer speech, Dion. <laughs> Oh, I love it. The programs we come up with are absolutely hilarious to heaven. <laughs> Do you think that Jesus gave Andrew a laminated pamphlet when he called him? With a perforated edge? Or text this word to that number? We need Jesus. We need his presence. I feel him so strong. I feel him so strong. Last week, I felt him, ah, I didn't like that. I don't like that. 
I think it's horrible to minister and not sense his presence. Yeah. Sounds like torture. Last night, I, last week I left here, I said, I'm coming. That's not going to be the norm. I'm coming. If you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Yesterday I took the whole day with him. It was wonderful. Time with him is never a waste of time. Do you know what we need? More people who are convinced of their inability. The Lord is attracted to that. I'll never forget my father-in-law telling me, actually, uh, you from Tampa, just join hands. Join hands, you guys, just join hands. Now you guys behind them, don't touch them. I don't want any of that stuff going on right now. Not that that's bad, I'm just not gonna do that now. And I want everyone in front of them, behind them, around them, just stretch your hands, don't touch them. Actually, everyone in the house, just stretch your hands. Now they have no chance of recovering. Tampa's dear to my heart. I was raised in Tarpon Springs. Tampa needs revival. Father, in Jesus' name. Help me, Joel, pick that up a little bit. Father, in Jesus' name, let your fire fall upon them. Are you guys family or what? You're all family or just friends? Uh, Father, come upon them and use them. Make your presence so real to them that tonight will mark them forever. Let them never doubt again. Never doubt your presence again. Let them know your wonderful Holy Spirit better than they know anybody on the face of this earth. And let a fire burn in them. Let the oil of heaven be poured upon them. Let the river of God be their drink. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any pastors here who came for a touch from heaven? Raise your hand. You came in from out of town as a pastor. For a, you, you want God to touch you. Huh? The guy from this morning, he got enough this morning. Maybe not. How many of you know the Lord does abundantly and above and beyond all we could ever ask or think? Where are those pastors? Wave at me. Father, you just lift your hands, pastors. I want everyone to stretch your hands. Come on. Oh, we need pastors to burn. We need pastors to burn. Father, come upon them in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right here in this section. Come upon them in the power of the Holy Ghost. An undeniable touch from God. Where are they? Wave at me, these pastors. Where are they? Where are they? Father, fill them all. Yeah, he's doing it all right. Fill them, fill them all. Fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill them. Fill them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Where else would you rather be? Scrolling? Watching the news? Not too much good news. I've got good news for you. Jesus is the king of the universe. The king of the universe. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was nice to see Jose weeping, playing the drums. Why were you crying? Come here. <clears throat> Look at all the foundation on this thing. <laughs> Why are you, take it, I trust you. 
Why were you weeping? Just his, uh, his goodness and his mercy. Because I don't deserve to do what I do today, but because he paid such a price, I can stand here today. I just love on him because he loves on me so well. And earlier today in prayer, I read, I can't remember if it was in Revelation or in Songs of Solomon, but just this one verse has been in my head all day, and it says, I will follow the Lamb where he goes. Yeah. I will follow the Lamb where he goes. John, come pray for it. Pray that a real Levite anointing will come on him. Oh. A real minister of the Lord. Release the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Fill him. Fill him. Clothe him. Make him a minister. A minister. Fill him up. How many drummers weep while they're playing drums? Thank you, Lord. John, where are you at? Let's get this mic. Where is that backslidden microphone? Come up here. Let's sing about the blood for a minute. reaches to the highest mountain. I want to hear it again. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, it reaches. Don't you just close your eyes and love him for a little while. Come on. And it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. This moves heaven. To the highest mountain. It's the singing of the blood in heaven. And it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood. Oh, it's the blood that keeps me straight. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, it reaches again. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain. 
valley too deep. Oh, and it flows. No sense too dark. To the lowest valley. Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength from death. father-in-law was used to share this story with us all the time it's at Catherine Kuhlman's memorial service and they asked him a no name to do the service and then the Lord had other plans there were many more famous people who could have done the meeting and here he came out in his early 20s and the soloist was singing. His name was Jimmy McDonald. And uh, they told my father-in-law, after one of the verses, you'll go out. And so during the song, Jimmy said, now a Benny Hen will come out. And there was nobody on the platform. <laughs> and my father-in-law was behind the curtain, petrified, thinking, how did I end up preaching Catherine Kuhlman's memorial service? It's a fair question. I think we'd all say the same thing. So he couldn't come out. He was stuck behind the curtain in fear. And then Jimmy said it again. And I grew to know and love Jimmy. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. But he said, Benny Hinn will come out now. And nobody came out. And I believe somebody actually grabbed him and pushed him out. He was in a tuxedo. And he started the song too high so he couldn't carry the song. And the spotlight, back then they would use big spotlights and these dark theaters was right in his face. He couldn't see and he thought, what a nightmare. I've been pushed out here. I don't know what to do. I can't carry the song. And he said something. Listen carefully. He said, Jesus, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then he heard a voice say, I'm glad. Now I will. It is not by mine. You have to know that. You have to believe that. It's not by our power. It has to be more than a verse to us. We have to be convinced that it is by the Spirit. That is not a lack of faith. That is faith. That is a lack of faith in us. But that is extreme faith in the Lord. You see? The Holy Spirit's just looking for friends. You, you, you can sit down, John. I pray the Lord gets you tonight. But you're dangerous when you get touched, so. He almost broke a nun's leg. <laughs> he fell under the power of God at Jesus 17 into one of the charismatic evangelical nuns. And he flew into her leg, and then he got up and blamed the nun for being there. <laughs> said, John, you can't blame a nun for anything. What are you doing? You see, you got to lose your playbook. You got to lose the playbook. You got to lose the demands. You got to lose the prerequisites.
You have to lose the list of requirements. You have to lose the sense that you know exactly what the Holy Spirit is going to do. No, this wind blows as he wishes. He's not looking for militant mercenaries. He's looking for yielded lovers who simply know how to spread their sail and trust the wind. It's that that brings God most glory. Janae will tell you, Janae's been with us now for three years. She's been in the back praying. Dom would tell you the same thing. Have we ever talked about how the meeting will go? Have we ever had a flow chart? We have a flow chart. It's called a river. That's the flow chart. There's not a whole lot of that. Go, never goes on in that little room. But there are tears in the carpet. Oh, Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit's looking for close friends who love what he tells them, but the content is not their only satisfaction. They just love it when he talks. They love the sound of his voice. They love everything about his voice. They just want him to speak. They just want him to move. They, they come in and die daily. They die daily. They lose themselves in the presence of the Lord. A sail doesn't do much when the boat's moving, but be there but be available, but be willing, but be yielded. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish someone here would get this. You'd change the world. Or God would change it through you. Some of you, how many of you grew up in church or you were a pastor's kid? Raise your hand. Oh. How many times did you hear the gospel and you were still backslidden? I mean, if sermons saved, you'd all be thoroughly, thoroughly saved throughout high school and college, right? Certainly your middle school years. I mean, Jesse heard more sermons than anyone. And I'll just leave it out there. There. Okay? I was going to say something. Sermons do not save. What did Paul say? Him we preach. Not this we preach or it we preach. Him. Paul understood. When I open my mouth and my heart is yielded, Jesus is formed before the eyes of people by the Holy Spirit. It's not sermons. It's Him. Theology is very important. I am studying theology right now. I think it's vital. It's very important. But at the core, theology doesn't save. The Lord saves. Now, you have to believe in the right Lord. But did you know the sinner's prayer didn't save you? Jesus saved you. What happened when you first got born again? Tell me this. Were you not aware of him all the time? Do you feel like you're reading your Bible with him? Because you were. You had that song on repeat. If you got saved when I did, you heard As the Deer so much. <laughs> I sing praises. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. That's what I grew up on. Alleluia. Agnes Day. Okay, I'm still singing them. And do you know, here we are in 2021, and you're singing them. And this place is full of young people, and we're singing old songs. We're singing old songs. This place is full of young people. It's not the genre of the worship that brings the people. It's the Spirit of the Lord. And do you know what? This is the truth. If this place weren't full, we'd still be here. Because the Lord is here. 
Don't you remember reading your Bible? Go back and read your notes in your little margin. You'll laugh at yourself. You thought you were being so deep. Go read them now. Read your notes. You're going to laugh at yourself. But Jesus didn't laugh at you. He loved it. He wasn't looking for your depth. He wanted you to fall into His, into the depths of His presence. Really. My dad borrowed my Bible for like a few weeks and used a felt pen to underline what he didn't realize that on the other side of the page he was crossing out the entire book of Colossians on the other side. I looked at what my dad underlined. I knew my dad hadn't been saved super long at the time. And I remember thinking, why did he underline that? There's no way he understood that. Because when you're in love, you don't care. It's not about understanding. Your heart's burning. The Holy Spirit teaches you. It just sounds right. Isn't that the truth? That's not how it happened when you get born again. Do you remember your first Bible? I remember my godmother got me my first Bible. I remember the day she gave it to me. I carried that thing around the streets of Tarpon Springs, walking around through Greek town, down the sponge docks with my Bible. And this was my lead-in to preach the gospel to people. Come to Jesus or you're going to go to hell. Well, I know that doesn't fit your power evangelism model. It worked. It's true. Now, there are better ways maybe to lead in. Agreed. But it is true. My aunt sat me down. I would spend, I was 12 years old, just spend hours with the Lord. I read it in Good Morning Holy Spirit that I'm reading right now. I try to read it every year to stir my soul. Listen to me. I want to give you a tip. When you feel the tug of the Lord, is this okay? When you feel the tug of the Lord and you feel Him drawing you, if you feel like it's a fresh drawing to be with Him, a new invitation for intimacy, you're going to come, you respond, and you're going to realize something. The flesh needs to die. Huh. You're going to realize that very quickly. Especially when ministry gets involved. Oh yeah. You know, this is hard work. Yeah, it is. The team works hard. We work hard. and May we never work too hard that we lose His glory. If we get, become that busy, we are too busy. This is not Martha image. This is Jesus image. I tell them that all the time. This is Jesus. God bless Martha. We love Martha. She did her best. This is Jesus' image. We are to be about Jesus here. And if we are more in love than when we, at, at the end, than when we started, we have been successful. So you come to the Lord. You doing okay, Jose? <laughs> You'll thank me, Destiny, if you're here. You'll thank the Lord, I should say. You know, if your husbands or whatever, if they're grumpy, tell them to go back in the prayer room. That's what Jesse does to me. I come out, she goes, you clearly need to go back in. <laughs> You're a bit moody. And I say that to her. You didn't spend time with Jesus today. You're a little snippy. She goes, well, I, I said, uh-huh, uh -huh. go, go, go. His presence is the cure-all. Is it not? You think, he, he, this guy's speaking in circles. I'm not speaking in circles. I'm just enjoying the new wine. I'm not speaking in circles. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> speaking in circles would be a great compliment. It's worse than that at this point. The Lord is here. The Lord is moving. What was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He draws you, you respond. You realize there's some flesh that needs to melt away. And, and, and you try your best, but you can't get it off of you. You can't do the work. The flesh loves to do the work because the flesh is into its own ability. So the flesh is just really into producing and sanctifying itself and teaching itself to pray and writing the, the songs the flesh wants to write and 
And then when there's no glory, just upping the volume of your voice a little bit to make up for it. And while the people give you a hand clap, God's going, you're struggling. I wish you just yield. It's true, right? Loud preaching is not always anointed preaching. You cannot get a devil out with volume. You think the devils are afraid of your loud voice? They're not at all. So you come in, you realize, ah, I need God to do it. I need God to do it. And you just, you just stay with Him. You just stay with Jesus long enough until He does the work. And as long as you just stay, you don't have to get everything and get everything right. Just don't leave. You see, the cure-all is proximity. What did Jesus say about the seeds that are scattered in Mark 4? He said, the ones that are stolen by the devil are those by the... Come here, John. Are those by the wayside. Jesus is the way. He's the way. Proximity is everything. If you want the seed over your life, the spoken words of God over you, don't leave His presence. If you want them to bear fruit, the way to protect what has been spoken over you is by staying close to Jesus. You move to the wayside, the devil steals it. See, some of you have forgotten what God spoke over you 15 years ago, five years ago, one year ago. It's because you left the glory. Proximity keeps His promises bearing fruit. So, John is walking on the way, in the way. The way is the presence of Jesus. The disciple stands right behind him. Jesus has His cross on His shoulder. His disciples have their cross on His shoulder. The cross brings you God, and then God gives you a cross. It is the saint's uniform. I say this all the time. Not some sparkly leprechaun from some dimension or a unicorn. That's not the Christian life. The Christian uniform is the wooden cross. We die daily. We die daily. That's what Paul said. We die daily. We are slaughtered daily. And we walk. And that's where Jesus is walking. His presence is the way. He himself is the way. And everything the Lord has spoken. Remember what the scripture says in Mark 4 that to him who has, even more will be given. Who has what? What did Jesus say prior to that? Take heed what you hear. You know why you can't hear him? You're not close to him. I'm sorry. I love you. You're not close to him. Why does he whisper? Why was his voice found in the still small voice? Why was his command found there? Because he understands that the tone of his voice gives him what he wants. Do you miss that? If he whispers, you have to come near to hear him. If he screams, well, then a long distance relationship will do. He won't have it because he's in love. He's super in love. And so you get with him, and, and then he begins to, to teach you. And I want to give you, I want to give you a treasure right now. I want to tell you something I do when I need that fire lit because you can't light it on your own <laughs> you want to you can't he has to light the flame he has to do it I'm, I'm going to give this to you you ready go back to the old wells go back to the old wells the old places of encounter dig up the old voices that stirred your heart in the beginning Listen to the same worship. Read the same books again. They're still alive. They're still alive. Ask yourself, who, who's moved me? Who pulls the strings of my heart? Who touched me in the early days? Go back there. Read it again. Listen to it again. Watch it again. You mark my words. That flame will light again. Because you're children of that stream. This week I began reading Good Morning. I said, I know what to do. I'm going back to the beginning. Where it all started as a little kid. Stuck in the wonder. You know, my father-in-law never taught me how to heal the sick. But we've seen miracles. We don't know what to do with all of them. Every week people are healed here. He didn't teach me that. He taught me how to walk with the Lord. 
And I would watch as a little boy. I would sense his presence in meetings like this. And, and my little heart would say, I got to know that. I want that. I want to be a friend of God. I want the Lord to walk with me. I want to tell people about Jesus like he does. I, I need to know that right there. Well, how long has that been? 32, 31 years. And just yesterday, I said, I know what to do. I was all alone in my room. I felt a little strong in the flesh. So I opened that old book. <sighs> the tone, the fragrance, the fire, reminding you of where it all started. Do you remember what Elijah did? When in Jezebel threatened him? Amazing, you can kill hundreds of false prophets. And a woman who's possessed with a devil, or more than one, says, I'm going to kill you. And he runs for dear life. Oh, I've, I've walked through that. You know, fear comes after servants of God. Threats from the devil. We're more vulnerable than we think. We are not as strong as we think. The best thing you can do rather than struggle is hide and abide. <laughs> he is the glory and the lifter of my head, of your head. We will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will we trust. He must be your refuge before He's your fortress. You must learn to hide before you go to war. Your greatest spiritual warfare is loving Jesus and worshiping Him. Just fly above the snake line. Don't get stuck in a battle. The devil would love for you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Jesus has destroyed him. Destroyed him. So there's Elijah hiding, and the Bible says he ran to the cleft of the rock. Many theologians believe that's the same rock that Moses met with the Lord at at Sinai. Hold on. What did Elijah do? In my weakest moment, I'll run to the place of encounter where my fathers met God. I'll run to the place of glory where those who've gone before me went to meet the Lord. Listen to me. Learn to stir up and let the well spring up. Let the old voices stir you once again. That fire will start burning. Then you're home free. Home free. I think this is a wonderful time to receive communion. Does everybody have it? Ryan, would you come? How many of you are grateful for the presence of Jesus? Come on, come on, hold on. Just, just lift your hands, lift your hands and begin to love Him all over the room. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Babe, may I have the elements as well? Oh, he's got mine. Come, Ryan. If you need your elements, keep your hands up. If you don't have any, keep your hands up. Holy Lord. We're, we're coming to the table in faith tonight. And I believe miracles will happen as we receive the body and blood of Jesus. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Mark Brooks, it's good to have you here. I pray the Lord gets you real good. That's your wife. I pray you both go back to Reading dripping in the oil of the Holy Spirit. Such an honor to have you here. Mark's been leading first year for how many years? 21 years leading first year at the Bethel School of Ministry. May the Lord 
clothe you both in his glory in a fresh and new way. Years ago, I was in Greece. I was just, I was on a 40-day fast leading up to the trip. And the Lord spoke to me in, the, in a dream, in the, in the night, in the night vision before the trip. And he said, I'm going to give you authority in the nation. You don't need to fast and pray when you go. Just go and preach my gospel. In other words, the fast here had broken something open. When I got to one of the meetings in Thessaloniki, which is in the north, I was ministering and I felt a breeze come in from the right side of the room. Tangibly felt it. I could almost hear it. Could feel the wind of the Spirit just come. You know, when you'd watch old videos with Miss Kuhlman and she'd say, hold on a second, just a second, just a second. He's here. And I used to wonder, what, what, what has happened? What changed the game? When I went on that trip, I, I, I discovered the beauty and power of that. I felt the wind of the Spirit come, and in a moment, the whole room changed. And a girl sitting, I think, on the second row behind my dad was sitting next to her mother. She was bent over in a brace with scoliosis. And her mother jumped to the side in shock because her mother heard her daughter's back audibly snapping back in place. The girl heard it as well. Those sitting around her heard it. The girl took her brace off and God completely straightened her right there in the second row. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. That night, my driver was driving us back to the hotel and I looked to the right and I saw a girl walking, carrying a brace like a briefcase straight down the road. Perfectly straight, completely set free. That is what the presence of the Holy Spirit does. That's why I prayed this morning, or this evening, I should say, in the beginning. Lord, make us aware of you the entire night. He has good things in store. And so we come to the table tonight in faith. In faith. Now, listen, before we receive, please hear me. In the deepest love I can give you, in the authority of the Lord, if you are living in unrepentant sin, you, have, uh, you had an opportunity tonight to come give your life to Jesus. I am asking you, I am begging you on behalf of the Lord, do not receive communion tonight if you are living in open rebellion and unrepentant sin. You can be in this room, yes, but this meal is so powerful that to come to the table in willful, unrepentant sin, this meal can actually cause, listen very carefully, it's so powerful that it can become a meal that the Bible says many have not discerned the body and blood of Jesus and have become sick and fallen asleep early. That's what the scripture says. I have to do my job as your pastor and say, look, if don't play games with this meal or repent now. You don't, we do not, I should say, have the authority to determine what sin is. Whether we like it or not, what is written is the Word of God. So God determines what sin is because sin is against God. Therefore, He has the right to say what it is. We do not. We cannot redefine it. We cannot make the scriptures more palatable for our own taste. No, no. It is best you just put the meal down than take it incorrectly. The devil entered Judas, the scripture says, after he took the meal improperly. Read it improperly. Read it. At the Last Supper, the Bible says, he received the meal with the wrong heart, with the motive to betray the Lord. And the Bible says the devil entered him. On the flip side, if this meal taken incorrectly can bring sickness and death, what can this meal do if it is taken correctly with the right heart? Say healing in life. Say. That's the promise. Now this meal unlocks the power of the covenant. Meals throughout the scripture unlock the 
power of the covenant God has got. And the Bible says, forget not all his benefits. He forgives us of all of our sins and heals us of all of our diseases. This is the Lord's will. So tonight, Heavenly Father, Ryan, I'll minister the body, you'll, you'll, you'll minister the blood. Father, tonight we come as your children and we thank you for the precious blood of, and body of Jesus. We thank you that he, you, Lord Jesus, are true bread. That you are the bread who's come down from heaven, the living manna. That you are food for our souls, that you are our healing. That it's your desire that we experience union and oneness with you. And so tonight, we lift this bread. Let's all lift it. We lift this bread because you were lifted on the cross. And we remember your wounds, the wounds on your head, the wounds in your hands, the wound on your side, the wounds in your feet, the wounds on your back that bring our healing. We remember your precious face that was beaten, your beard that was pulled. And Jesus, tonight we say thank you for your precious love, your sacrifice. We break the bread tonight because your body was broken, your flesh was broken, that we would be made whole. And so tonight, in Jesus' mighty name, we command every sickness to bow its knee to the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Leave God's people now. You in your homes, I pray that you're receiving as well. Be completely free. Be delivered from emotional sickness and physical sickness and broken hearts be delivered be free all pain all symptoms go now in Jesus name we receive your precious body let there be none feeble among us here in Jesus name receive receive King Jesus, King Jesus, we thank you for your blood, Praise you, Lord. your blood that has cleansed us of all unrighteousness. We thank you, Jesus, worthy. that as our high priest, you have given yourself. And you are the sacrifice, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you have not purchase us with silver or gold, but with your precious, yes. precious blood of the Lamb. Lord, we thank you for your blood that has brought us into your very own presence. Hallelujah. That your blood is the reason why we get to gather in your presence today and have union with you and worship you. It is your blood. You said, though our sins may be red like scarlet, you have made us white as snow. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, that your blood shed was for our sanctification, Hallelujah. redemption, justification. It thoroughly washed us. We thank you for every drop that was shed, every drop, Jesus, down mm. Golgotha's path that was shed for us, Lord, so we can be whole, so we can be covered. So we plead the blood of Jesus over this place and over our minds and over Hallelujah. our bodies, over our lives, our families, our homes, our vehicles, our cars, our houses. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your covering and for your protection. Precious King, we partake of you today and we drink of your cup, the new covenant, in your precious name. Receive the Let's cup drink. of the Lord. Why don't you just lift your hands where you are and just begin thanking him. Come on, thank him. Thank him for his mercy. Oh, come on. Close your eyes and just let your heart gaze upon him. And just thank the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Can you believe he died for you? What mercy, what love. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I just remembered we forgot the offering. Don't you love that kind of church? That, oh, thank you, Lord. But we're going to receive it anyways. This is a great time to give right now. In fact, this is the proper time to give from the table of the Lord. If you're watching around the world, guys, can we just let our online family know how grateful we are? I hear testimonies everywhere I go. We love you. Thank you so much. If this ministry has blessed you, you can text GIVE to the number on your screen. Church, let's be faithful tonight with our tithes and our offerings. If this is not your home church, your tithe belongs at your home church. But when you come into the presence of the Lord, never come empty-handed. Come and honor the Lord tonight with your giving. How you doing, young man? You need help? <laughs> God bless you. He's doing all right, huh? <laughs> Never trust friends who bring you to meetings like this. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let's give tonight. Let's be faithful. Let's throw that info there up on the screen, guys. <laughs> Why are you laughing, John? John's laugh is gloriously contagious. You can take give to that number on your screen. If you need an envelope tonight and you are not... Uh, giving by text to give, would you lift your hands? Okay, we've got, oh, there's one there. One there, lift it, lift it high so they can help you. We'll get those to you. There's got a few there. Hallelujah. Y'all are so lucky that I am not my father-in-law who locked the doors during the tithe. Some precious people had to leave during the offering. Oh, you're so lucky that I'm... <sighs> that we've progressed. <laughs> people would run into the bathroom during the offering and he'd send the ushers to the urinals. <laughs> They'd say, sir, you cannot rob God. Come out of your stall. <laughs> We're not doing that, but it is awesome and funny. Let's be faithful tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Bless your people. Keep them. Bless them abundantly. In the name of Jesus, for the sake of your gospel, do it and flood the nations with the name and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let me just pray one more blessing over you before you go, and we'll end the night. For those of you who want to rush the buckets, you can bring, the buck you can bring your offering, and then... You'll be dismissed. Just lift your hands to heaven. Father, we thank you for the precious anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I pray it upon everybody here. Let your glory rest upon every person, every ministry, every local church that's represented here. Every father, every mother, bless their homes in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. What a great night. I love you. We will see you. Oh, I didn't announce the new members thing. I don't know. I don't want to announce anything right now. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm toast. But <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Check your emails this week. We're having a, a, a wonderful gathering. And is it in a week's time, I think? Love you guys. Hey. <laughs> so cute. All right. See you Sunday. Love you. Bye-bye. demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the Son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us, and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are going to be coming they're going to be teaching instruments. They're going to be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we want to invite you to come. Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School, has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. That Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. 
Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?